Hello Antwerps, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Um, this is going to be, uh, this might be a useful video I hope. Um, what I'm aiming for this video is, um, uh, this is a, I've liquid damaged my laptop, what do? Now, liquid damage is such a broad range of damage that can be done to a laptop. And it's very much a case by case basis as to exactly what you do and when, what you should and shouldn't do and so on. But uh, let's say you've just, like this customer who brought this laptop in, which I've already had a quick peek at, but we'll get to that. Um, they spilled a glass of water across it and they tried to turn it back on and it said no boot device found, couldn't boot up. And then they waited a bit and then they tried it again and it wouldn't turn on at all. Um, so then they brought it into me and I've had a quick look. So um, if you're unable, first thing I would advise doing is get your device to someone who knows what they're doing. Um, but if you can't do that, then here's something that you can try doing yourself. Firstly, forget putting it in the airing cupboard, forget putting it in rice. That's not going to help you right now. What you have to do is open the device up and get it dried out inside. So if you don't, it will corrode inside. You'll get corrosion, it'll rust from the inside out, which will destroy it internally. So um, what we're gonna do is, if I just flip this guy over, flip that over and hang it off the side of the bench. So the screen is just hanging off the back here so I can easily turn it around. I've taken out all the screws on the bottom of the laptop. Um, you know, you can see where the screw holes are on this particular HP laptop, but it's gonna vary from laptop to laptop. So I'm not gonna go into the details there. The point is, you've gotta figure out how to take the bottom cover off of your laptop. Um, on some laptops, the bottom won't come off, the top will come off instead. But taking laptops apart is another thing entirely. I'm gonna assume that you can figure that out at this point. If you can't figure that out, you're gonna to need to take it to someone who can. Once you're in the laptop, what we need to do is identify areas where it is liquid damaged. So let me give you a close up. So first, if we have a look around the motherboard of the laptop and all the internal components, we need to identify areas that have corroded. So one spot straight away, you can see we've got this schmutz on top of the hard drive there. I can scrape that off my finger and I've got, I've got this green, green bluish residue that's formed. That's formed on the circuit board of the hard drive there. And in addition to that, I've already taken the screws out of this, so I'll just lift this out. If I just remove the connector here, we've also got uh, corrosion has built up on the power connector of the drive and on the inside of the connector there. So this is almost certainly why our hard drive wasn't registering. If we're lucky, if we clean up this schmutz, the hard drive may come good and we may be able to get the data back. So that's one of our concerns. And then if we have a look around, let's see, that connector looks okay. Uh, if we wander over to here, we've got a USB connector that's also got traces on it. For now, I've just disconnected this ribbon that joins it back to the main motherboard. So we can just take that out of the equation right now because having a USB port on the side of the laptop that doesn't work is the least of our problems. Uh, it also looks like there's a bit of, that might just be dust on the uh, DVD drive connector there. However, you can also see we've got schmutz there as well. So there's a little bit of corrosion in that connector. So let's just undo that. And we've got some across the keyboard connector here as well. So we're probably gonna find that the keyboard is also not working. So there's actually fair amount of damage to this. So what I need to do is I need to go across all of the spots where I can see corrosion and remove that corrosion. And if we're lucky, that'll be enough. Now, if we're not lucky, that won't be enough. And we have to start going into circuit diagrams and diagnostics and figuring out what's preventing it from turning on and so on and so forth. However, that's gonna be way beyond the ability of a, a DIY at home person who's never done this before. So we're gonna try and be realistic about what you can and can't achieve yourself here. The first thing I would do is take pictures of everything. Take pictures of everything you remove, everything where you found corrosion, take pictures of all the evidence because that way, if you eventually hand this over to someone else, you can provide them with lots of images showing where the damage was and what you may have already cleaned up. That's the best thing you can do to help someone else if you get out of your depth here. It's also good as a useful reminder for yourself. 
I record my work even when I don't make these videos because it means as I go back, I can refer to the previous footage and see what I've already done up to this point. So in order to actually clean the board up, there's two things we can use. Um, I have on hand isopropyl alcohol in here. Uh, this is 99.9% .9 rubbing alcohol. If you don't have that available, a poor man's substitute is window and glass cleaner. Um, you need to be a little bit more careful with this stuff. You need to make sure that you've dried it out thoroughly. However, you can safely clean electronics with this. I've done it for years. Um, don't use water because water will take too long to evaporate. What you need is a cleaning agent that evaporates quickly and doesn't leave a residue behind. That's the important thing. And this is why alcohol is really good because it evaporates very, very quickly. Right, so I'm going to use that and I'm going to use a toothbrush, just an ordinary toothbrush. I'm just going to use that to clean up um, all of the gunky areas. Now, as I say, this is going to remove all the evidence. However, um, this is the basic poor man's approach to um, resolving liquid damage. And I've saved a lot of stuff doing this. So it's always a good place to start. So I've just spritzed some alcohol on there. I'm just going to wipe that down. I think I'm going to have to take this circuit board off as well because it's quite possible that we also have um, liquid underneath it. I'll just use a soft cloth just to wipe off any excess. We're also looking for like literal puddles of water as well. If you find actual puddles, then you need to grab yourself some loo roll or something like that and just dry that out. Um, however, quite often it may or may not dry out quickly. It depends on how long it's been since initial impact. Uh, right, I'm going to clean up this bit over here as well. Can I take that out easily? Uh, there's one screw holding that in. Let's just uh, take this out and we can inspect it. All right, so this is just dust on this side. That's okay. Not fussed about dust. I'm going to look inside the connector. And I can't see any green schmutz in there, so that looks good. I think this guy's going to be okay. And that is good because it's got our power LED on it. So uh, we kind of want this to work so we can see what we're doing when we try and power the laptop back up again. Okay. Right. And I'll clean up these connectors as well. Just brushing things down. We're not scrubbing, we're just brushing. And I'll just blow, blow dry the excess. Okay, let's have a look around over here. So I'll just take out this memory module. So we'll just bend these guys apart. That looks good. This, all of this dust I'm seeing, that's a good sign. If you've got, like, this dust has not been disturbed, and that means there was no liquid there. Whereas if you see big old tidal marks around here where all the liquid has moved the dust, that means this got, that, that area got drowned. Whereas the fact that I'm seeing undisturbed dust on the underside of some of these modules, that is good because it means that the liquid didn't get there. Likewise, the fan over here, that's got a lot of nasty looking dust on it. However, again, this looks relatively unharmed. I'll just brush that clean while I'm here. That'll need cleaning out with an airline later, but again, cooling is really the least of our concerns right now. And honestly, I think that's about it with this one. And if we analyze the damage that we found, we had damage to the hard drive connector, including the power connector on it. And we had damage to our keyboard connector and the DVD drive connector. So. The combination of that lock could quite easily have stopped this thing from turning on and given us a no boot device found error. So it seems that we've done enough to justify the errors we had. So I'm going to connect all of this back up and I think we'll power it up and we'll see if we get lucky. And, you know, if I get lucky on this, then that's awesome. 
you may or may not be so lucky. We'll see. But the idea of this video is, is just to show you as just the first pass, the bare basics of what you can do in a disaster situation. I'm going to inspect this drive as well, actually, because uh, as I say, I think this drive did get splashed because we had liquid over there. So I'm going to check on, on the underside of this. I'll need a uh, torque screwdriver for this. That looks like a T5. Um, I'm not sure I would recommend taking your hard drive apart yourself. Let's move this laptop to one side so I've got a flat space. I'm not opening the hard drive up. I'm just removing the controller board from the bottom, which is the absolute minor amount of uh, self-service you can do with a hard drive. Don't take the top cover off unless you know what you're doing because you really will risk your data there. However, usually these uh, these controller boards are quite safe to uh, tinker with. I've never damaged anything by removing one of these. Oh, these are T4 screws, which are just a size down from the screwdriver I'm using, but we're surviving. Okay, so under this board, we're going to find some padding. Ooh, it's a good thing we took that off. We've got actual liquid here. So you can see on the padding here where this liquid has really ingressed into this drive. And it's still wet. I'm very glad that I actually checked that. However, again, if we're lucky, it has not penetrated inside the drive. Because these guys, they're not sealed, but they're pretty well closed up. So... Uh, in my experience, hard drives will usually survive a splash like this. Um, total submersion, blah, but you know, just a splash like this, I, I still rate my chances of getting data off of this. So I'm going to, hmm, I'm going to use the cloth and I'm just going to gently wipe off this excess liquid. I should once again remind you that Really, if you're dealing with something like this, I would recommend talking to someone who knows what they're doing rather than do it, doing it yourself. Disclaimers and all that. Um, however, you know, not everyone has that luxury. And if you're stuck, then, you know, maybe this will help. All right, I'm going to squirt the alcohol onto the brush this time rather than directly onto the device. I'm just going to gently brush down that connector. Okay, right, let's check out this circuit board. Okay, so this is just air dried naturally now. It's air dried within seconds, but because it was enclosed and wrapped up, it could have been days that that liquid could have stayed there and just eaten away at all these solder joints. I'm gonna spritz that with the alcohol. And again, I'm just gonna toothbrush that clean. And I'll just have a quick look on the inside of the connector. Yeah, the connector looks good because we've already cleaned that up from outside. And I can't see anything that looks really bad. When looking for damage, I'm looking for any of these surface mount components where the, the metal ends have gone like black or something like that. So um, right now, the ends of um, the ends of like this capacitor here and like these capacitors, these are all silver and shiny. These ones have dulled slightly where there's been some corrosion there, but they haven't gone black. Nothing has exploded or any or, or burnt up or anything like that. So there's a good chance that this is all absolutely fine. And now we've removed the uh, the short. Now we've removed the corrosion. Those circuits should return to normal working order as long as they haven't already burnt out. But if they had already burnt out because there'd been power under a short circuit condition then I would expect to see like black marks and horribleness like that. Right, I'm gonna drown this uh, in alcohol to try and drive out the moisture. I don't know how effective that's gonna be. Oh, that just broke up straight away, fine. This thing is not really structurally integral. It's just there to prevent moisture getting in. 
Now, I'm just going to quickly try and dry this in front of my heater. I'll be right back. Right, I gave this a bit of a blow dry with the air compressor. The heater wasn't very effective, but the air compressor drove quite a lot of the moisture out of that. It's still a bit damp to the touch though, so I'm just going to leave this for a while just to air dry of its own accord, and then we'll put that hard drive back together again. So um, I will see you guys after the cut. I'm going to leave all this alone just so that everything can air dry, and then we'll come back, we'll put it back together again, and with a bit of luck, we should get a boot from this, la from this laptop. Okay, the board and the felt have dried out. We in focus, we are. So I'm gonna arrange the felt back into the drive, which went in roughly like that. And we'll put this board back on top. I'm just gonna give that another look over. Yeah, I'm content with that. Lay that into place. And we'll screw the lid back down on that. And then what I might do, I might just plug this uh, hard drive into um, my workstation uh, just to see if it actually spins up and runs before we run it off the laptop. Um, because obviously at this point I have two points of interest. One is getting the laptop up and running again. The other is being able to recover the data. Um, the data is more important than the laptop at this point because unsurprisingly there's no backup. So if I can get the data back first, as far as I'm concerned, my primary objective is achieved. And then if the laptop also works, then that is an added bonus. Given that laptops are quite difficult to get hold of at the time of making this video because of a current pandemic, uh, I think the uh, customer would be most grateful with not having to buy a new one. Uh, it had a little, had a couple of marks down the side of the drive as well. However, this is just bare metal. I don't really care about that. But on the other hand, given that there was uh, liquid marks all the way down there, we can probably guess that the liquid came in on that side of the drive, because this is also the area where the damage was. And that would have been, with the the orientation in the laptop, that would have been nearest the DVD drive. So we could probably theorize that if liquid was spilled on top of the keyboard, it came in through this area and flowed in. Realistically, I think we we really should take the motherboard out and inspect the other side of it as well. So I think I'm gonna do that in a moment. First, I'm gonna plug this, ha this hard drive into my laptop so I can find out if we've got the data or not. And then we'll move on to uh, taking out that motherboard. Okay, I'm gonna plug this into a USB hard drive dock I've got set up under the counter here. It didn't crash the computer. The disc has spun up and it looks like it's reading. Is it gonna mount? Okay, the drive has mounted as well. I'm currently trying to access the user folder. If I can get into this user folder, I'm gonna copy all of the data out here. Uh, first rule of data recovery, if you get access to the drive at any time, back it up right now. Um, there have been too many times where I've plugged in a drive and it's mounted, I've been like, yeah, it's fine, we'll get that later. Later on, it has not mounted. The moment you see the data you're trying to get, grab it right there, right now. While I wait for that to access and copy, um, we're gonna take this motherboard out because we've seen evidence that the liquid probably came in through the keyboard, so we better check the other side of the logic board to make sure there's nothing horrifying there. So I'm just gonna disconnect all of these wires and we'll take it out. Remembering that I started off this video as uh, steps that you should take, um, it's kind of up to you how far you want to go. Um, I would do every, I would take at least the, the steps that I'm taking in this video. Um, but if at any point you're watching this going, oh, I do not feel happy doing this at all, then that probably means you should take it to an expert. Um, but yeah, here's the information if you feel you can use it. Uh, this display connector is stiff. They always are. Uh, 
Okay, I've removed all of the screws and disconnected all the wires. So this board should lift out now. Oh, I missed one. Always just give a gentle lift and see if it's moving. It is. Here's the fan. The fan should come with me. Oh, it's under a hook. I did try to disconnect the fan, but I think it's easier to bring the fan with me. That needs to undo as well. There we go. Right, so flipping the motherboard over, it's got a lot of dust and schmutz over it. However, like I said before, dust is good. Um, you can see there's no visible tide marks here at all. Um, this dust is not disturbed in the slightest. There was no liquid ingress under here at all. So, um, yeah. Uh, is, was there actually any gap? Not really. I mean, looking at the plastic film under here, there was there's a gap here where the keyboard connector is so there would have been liquid ingress into here which is then what damaged the keyboard connector but there was no real means for the for the liquid to get at the motherboard so uh so yeah this this plastic um this plastic film that was preventing short circuits against the um metal back of the keyboard uh, has actually done a reasonable good job of liquid damage protection as well uh yeah i think this is going to be okay I'll dust this while I have it out. I'll just use a paintbrush to do that. If you live in an area where static electricity is prevalent, I would recommend not doing this. However, uh, I'm in the UK. There is a lot of humidity. Uh, static is not a thing here. <coughs> there we go. This is smoker's dust, as I call it, which is where there's been a smoker in the house, uh, maybe the owner, maybe someone else, um, and the tar in the smoke makes the dust go all claggy and heavy and brown and sticky like this, ruins laptops. Very nasty stuff. Uh, that's enough for now, I think. Um, I'm going to put this motherboard back in. There's not much more to see here. Okay, that's reassembled. Uh, I'm still waiting to find out if I can access this hard drive or not. Um, uh, I'm waiting for it to give me permission to the user folder. Uh, if this doesn't work soon, I'm probably going to cancel it and I'm going to plug the drive into my MacBook instead. Um, MacOS is really good at accessing damaged um, Windows volumes because it will mount the drive as read-only. And because it's mounting it in a completely different way to how Windows would access the drive, it drastically increases your chances of getting to the data. It's not because MacOS is magical, wonderful, or anything like that. It's just simply because it's different. Uh, likewise, in the old days, uh, you used when um, the uh, Apple HFS driver for Windows used to be good. The the opposite was also true. I used to recover um, uh, MacOS hard drives on a Windows computer. Um, however, that's a lot trickier to do these days because um, uh, Apple have all but abandoned their Windows support, uh, except for the bare essentials at any rate, so far as I can tell. Um, anyway, right, uh, while I wait for that, I think I'm going to power this thing on and see if it starts, because um, if this thing turns on, then that will be pretty good. That means that we've got a working laptop at least. So I'm going to turn the laptop over and I'm going to grab a charger for it. Okay, so we're running this with the bottom case and stuff off, which isn't great for ventilation and all of that, but I'm not particularly bothered about that right now. Um, have we got, yeah, we have got a charge light on the side. That's a good start. Power. We have a power light on the side. Uh, we have screen output. Uh, we've, got a we've got a line across the display 
Uh, and it says boot device not found, which is normal because there's no hard drive connected. Um, that line across the display, I'm not sure what that's about. That's likely to be... This laptop is fairly well worn. I'm guessing that was already there because that doesn't look like something from liquid damage to me. Um, that doesn't match up with liquid damage. This is more just rough treatment of the LCD. It might even be just a graphical glitch that disappears. Ah. Um, so I'm not too fussed about that right now. Um, there's no other usual. Uh, another classic sign of liquid damage to an LCD is you'll see um, if the liquid gets between the layers of the LCD, it'll climb through capillary action between the sheets of the LCD and you'll get a, um, a weird kind of fractal effect, uh, like a crystalline shape uh, form in the LCD, which it still works, it just impacts the display quality. Uh, in any case, that laptop is turning on, so that's great. Um, I'm going to unplug that for now. So I think the laptop is saved. Uh, now we're just waiting to find out whether that data is okay or not, and whether, um, and whether the hard drive is okay or not. So uh, I'm going to pause and I'll get back to you on that. Okay, right, I managed to recover the data from the drive by plugging it into my MacBook, which, as I mentioned, uh, makes things a bit easier. The drive doesn't feel like it's failing. Um, however, in order to, to just skip past any NTFS or Windows partitions, plugging it into a Mac just jumped me past that point. So I've gotten all the vital data off the, lap, the, the, the laptop, and now I'm doing a full backup using Drive Snapshot, which you can see running here. Um, and this is pulling just shy of 6,000 megs per second, which is, um, uh, sorry, megs per minute, which is nearly 100 megabytes per second. So the transfer speed that the drive is giving me is indicative of a healthy drive. Now, after doing this, my next stage would be to run it through CTools for Windows. Um, and I would do a, a long test, a long generic test in CTools for Windows, which will do a proper sector scan on the drive. But I've just spoken to the client um, and I said to them, I, I told the client, I don't think the drive is failing, but I would replace it anyway because the drive has been damaged and it's the main, it's the main system drive in a daily, daily driver laptop that they are using to work from home right now. I wouldn't mess about. I would replace this drive anyway. We don't have to replace the drive. However, I wouldn't trust this drive for anything important in the future because it's been damaged. Um, and plus, at this point, we can replace it with an SSD now, which is going to make the laptop a whole lot better, just because SSDs are so much better and they're so cheap, just SSD everything. So I'm not going to bother running it through CTools. However, I think it would probably pass a CTools test. Um, I'm going to go straight to um, I'm going to go straight to SSD replacement. So I'll let this snapshot finish. Then I'm going to restore this snapshot onto an SSD, and we're going to put an SSD back in the laptop instead. Right, well, I've restored the backup that I took onto a brand new SSD and I've put that in the laptop and as you can see, the laptop now starts and runs. Um, and to all intent and purpose, this is now recovered. It needs a service. I've got to put the screws back in it. It's running Windows 8, so I'm going to uh, service it and upgrade it to Windows 10. However, for the purposes of this video, um, this thing is, we're basically done now. Everything else from here on out is just routine. So. Obviously, um, we could have put the original hard drive back in and gotten this far, and the SSD was optional, but highly recommended. Once there's been any kind of damage or anything like that to a drive, just replace it. It's just not worth the risk. Um, and uh, obviously, the actual details of fixing a laptop and what you should do if it still doesn't work after doing this, it varies a lot. Um, but the purpose of this video was not, a, there's no single video that will tell you how to fix a liquid damage laptop. But I hope by watching this, you've got a rough idea on where to start, which is the main thing. Because a lot of liquid damage, if you take the right actions at the start, like we did here, you might get a relatively easy fix that doesn't involve soldering, that doesn't involve lots of expensive parts or lots of expensive repair fees from other um, repair centers. But again, remember that liquid damage is a very, very high roll damage. You know, it's luck of the draw. You know, I've seen spots of liquid completely kill a device. I've seen laptops that have fallen into a bathtub be absolutely fine just by cleaning them up. 
So hopefully this should give you a rough idea of what you're up against and where you might be able to start if you're going to try and DIY your laptop. But as I say, the most valuable lesson is having a look and knowing when you might be out of your depth. I hope this was all helpful. Thank you very much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.